I want to watch it. Someone recommended it because we were talking about Hawaii earlier. Nagavai, Nagavai. Overpriced housing? Oh, it's horrible over there. Yeah. All right. What happened to Hawaii? We'll find out in a minute. We'll find out in a minute. Okay, we'll just keep watching. All right, let's do it. Three, two, one. Boom. You're not going to become a Hawaiian. If you're coming, then leave. Go back to the mainland. We ain't afraid of you guys Ooh. here. Bro, what do we even do? You're not from Maui. What do we do? White people. Okay. White oh, people? Oh, shit. Really, really expensive. My, my baby sister had to move. Her and her family moved to Las yeah. Vegas to survive. Everybody getting priced out of paradise. Every year, 15,000 plus native Hawaiians leave Hawaii to the mainland, which now has more Hawaii. 15,000? That's insane! ...than Hawaii itself, with the median house costing 1.1 million plus dollars. Yo, you guys think you got it bad. That's actually insane. Oh my god! 1.15 million?! Single family homes, by the way. This isn't like talking... This isn't even like a multi-house. Oh. The local Hawaiians are being priced out of paradise as millionaires buy second vacation homes, Airbnb. Oh, oh I see Kuckerberg on there. Yeah, Kuckerberg. Oh, what's his name? God, you know what I'm talking about. They have like private islands and stuff. Yeah. Second vacation homes, Airbnb entrepreneurs rent out their apartments to tourists, billionaires buy entire islands, and mainlanders move to Hawaii. The locals are unable to afford the rapid increase in the cost of living, turning places like Waikiki, the symbol of Honolulu's bustling tourism, into a dumping ground for homeless Hawaiians. But with nearly 24% yeah. of Hawaii's economy reliant on tourism, are tourists even welcome in Hawaii anymore? That's what I'm saying. Like when I when I lived in New Zealand, like you did have tourist season and it was very obvious. Um even if you live like in in an area that's just the city itself, like the main cities, uh you definitely notice a difference. I can't imagine with like tourism how how it affects Hawaii if everybody went away. It affects everything. Yeah, I mean, it's good for your economy, but it also sucks really bad. Don't come and don't buy land. Simple as that. Hawaii is the number one most expensive state in America while ranking number four wow. in homelessness. How much longer yeah. will Hawaii have Hawaiians? Uh, has Hawaii. it gotten really expensive to live out here recently or has it always been that way? It's gotten really expensive. Yeah? If you mm. were to try to, I don't know, get a place right now, how much do you think that would cost for like a studio apartment? Mm. Oh my gosh. It's like really, really expensive. $1,300 a month for one bathroom? Nah, that's... That's cooked, bro. That is cooked. Oh, I want to ask you. Um, I don't like shit. Nothing from you, man. I don't need nothing from you. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, All right. You're white people. Okay. White people? Yeah. What did I do? He's pissed. No, He's angry. Who fuck with him. I don't need you. Where are you from originally? Originally from Ohio. Okay. Been here for 20 years. You She's a howly chat. Consider yourself uh, local at this point? Absolutely. All I'm my grandbabies howly. are local. Do you feel welcomed here? Or is there a sort of contention? No. We were welcomed, we were loved. Can you explain the white people concept? That's co like the howler? Well, she's been here for 20 years, to be fair. I don't think this started until about 20 years ago. Yeah. Hi, people. Hi, people. Hi, people. Because Hawaii needs visitors. Hawaii needs people to love the island like we do. Where did you live on the mainland? I lived in Michigan. Yeah. So you came out here and the, the plan was to figure it out kind of when you got here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we get swept everywhere. I just got swept again that last third. Oh, she's homeless. Oh. Oh, she's one of the homeless people that goes to Hawaii because it doesn't really get cold enough. Yeah, the main thing that I've learned from, like, watching documentaries on homeless people, I went on a binge, like, a couple of years ago, but I, I was just learning about it. The reason why, it's because it's warm enough that they don't freeze to death. Thursday, took everything I owned, everything. Do you have any current plans of getting off the streets and I'm look, working. cop right there? Yep. Yeah. And how long have you been out here, Sid? 20 Poppers. years. 20 years? When 20 I had to years. quit my job, I gained my freedom. It's no more having to 
I buy anybody's rules. I can be out here. I can be free. Yeah. I've been kept. She got no teeth down. I've been ever since I was a kid. So for me, this is nothing but camping. You might be surprised to notice how many people from the mainland are on these streets. I mean, even as hard as it is out here, I still love it here. Yeah. Usually I work a little. Yeah, because it's, it's tropical all year round pretty much. Yeah. Bet everything like that, but then I just like to skate. Looking for that perfect. Like no way. more taxes, no more BS, no more stress. Yeah, dude, yeah. you know, I got a puppy. Like I said, my friend freaking. Yeah, so you can show me a little, your crib tour. So you have that inflatable setup to lay your body on? Basically it. That's it. We need help. You say you got housing for the homeless? Yeah. Where is it? Um, I have a friend of mine, her name is- Oh, and taxes in Hawaii are obscene too. I I know that from friends that live there. It's Angela. And or she lived works there. Every Used to. day. She works the graveyard shift at the airport. And she's homeless. There are people out here who got jobs and they can't afford housing. Wow. Aloha. All right, we're seeing tents strewn along every aspect of this beach. Tent after tent after tent. It's pretty unreal just how many people are out here. What's your name? Bob. Bob, good to meet you, Bob. How did you end up on the beach out here? If you want to watch extended convos with guys like Bob, DLC content with Unc, who you'll meet later in this video, exclusive videos never uploaded to YouTube, and early Don't access plug. to every video of mine before it goes up on YouTube, you can subscribe yeah, to my Patreon DLC? at patreon.com slash Tyler Oliveira for as little as five bucks a month. Help support our boots on the ground journalism and go watch the Hawaii DLC content after you finish watching this, and then stay tuned and watch the next video before anyone else sees it on YouTube. YouTube at patreon.com slash Tyler Oliveira. I don't know, I just got here and I stayed here. How is it uh, living out here? <laughs> I got here and I stayed here because it's nice. <laughs> the beach, is it tough? Is it pretty easy like with the it. weather? I like it. Yeah. How'd you end up here on the beach? Couldn't pay rent. How much was your rent at the time? Uh, at least five. Five hundred? Studio, like the um, shack really, up in Nanakuli, so. A lot of people getting priced out of their homes out here? Five hundred for a shack, ugh. Pretty much, yeah. Do you have any family members or friends who have moved to the mainland because it got too expensive out here? Absolutely. So I'm one of six kids and I am the only one currently living oh. here. Guys, the DLC is stuff he can't post on YouTube. Of course he's gonna post it somewhere else where he can make money off of it. It's not that deep, like... <laughs> Some of it is like demonetized. Losing the, the entire video is demonetized because he can't make money off of it. In Hawaii. Yeah. Where did they go? One went to Ohio. Okay. Two's in Nevada in Reno. One's in. Oh, I know a lot of stories of people going to Nevada from Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, Washington and one's kind of floating all over. And they yeah. left for better job opportunities, better wages. For the most part, yeah. The problem right now is that people who are purchasing second homes and Airbnb entrepreneurs are renting out these long-term housing units, turning them into short-term housing units, decreasing the available long-term housing mm -hmm. supply, driving prices up, and making it nearly impossible for some- And all the, all the rich tech bros, they basically get these. What I think they should do is not let people do the renting, like do the whole renting after buying. It's so unfair to the people that actually live there. It's it's so sad. This happens everywhere with tourism. Yeah, I think they should be able to... Do, they should do something about it. Up and making it nearly impossible for some of these locals to pay rent, much it's less insane. own a home. But look at that view. Who wouldn't want to live here? No, it's beautiful. Yeah. So I met up with lifetime Honolulu resident David to understand the culture of Hawaii a little more and the underlying oh. tensions between Hawaiians, locals, and white people. David, how long have you lived here in white Hawaii? People. 25 years, born and raised. Okay, but are you Hawaiian? I'm not Hawaiian. I'm Italian, Filipino. Would locals here consider you Hawaiian? No, definitely not. What does it mean to be a Hawaiian out here? It means to have some semblance of Hawaiian blood. Are the locals mm. living here in Waikiki? No, definitely not it's majority tourists there's some buildings here that people live in but they're like multi-million dollar building uh, apartments yeah. and oh my median God. average price right now last i checked maybe a year or two ago was like 700 grand for a house on island and that's nothing in this area that's on the other parts of the island definitely not something not even in the <laughs> that local people can afford. We're headed to Kahala. This is the Beverly Hills of Honolulu. David, is that true? Ooh. Who lives there? Well, I think the most notable person who lives there is Piero Midiar. He's the founder of eBay. Is there anything out here? It's yeah, that's definitely not a Hawaiian, huh?
Take the same. Yeah. Pro pro definitely over a million. You're not going to find anything less than that here. So that's a nice little mansion right there. Little mansion oh my right God. there. Cyber truck all the way out here. I mean, lots of doctors, Ew. lawyers, accountants, financiers live out there. Like, it's not uncommon to see a Ferrari pull into a garage or a Bentley. It's it's going to be such a rude awakening in like maybe like 30 or 40 years when it gets overrun by homeless people and then the tech bros abandon everything. It's so gross and sad and unfair. One of my buddies lives in a, a tower and he was telling me, you know, the building I used to live in, like 40% of it is unoccupied because a lot of the international investors buy up those properties. And they don't want to rent it for like a little bit less money because they're greedy fucks. Just leave it vacant. So that's got to piss off a lot of locals out here who are getting priced up into apartments they can barely afford. Yeah, definitely. And they're building like little sustainable mobile homes and little encampments. Where this is bougie out here, David. What is this? Yes, sir. Kahala Hotel. Okay. There's dolphins around here for sure. Dolphins? Look at them. There he is. Nice. And they like oh being in the school pond. Oh my god, there's yeah, dolphins! You know, if they uh, didn't, they would show us signs that they had lesser welfare. So like dolphin depression? Basically, yeah. So you have oh. like light eyes, light hair, you're white. Um, yep. How has that experience been out here? Is it pretty chill or is there a friction? Yeah, so I'm Holly, by staying in my lane. One of the reasons Howley. that it actually took me a while to decide to move out here was because I knew I was moving to an actively colonized landscape. So I do what I can to make sure that I am being respectful, that I am letting other people's voices be elevated above of mine. If they're coming out to visit, come out and visit and do so responsibly. If you are just coming out here because you just want to have a party, maybe think about where you're going. Maybe go to Miami, you know? All right, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> so would it be fair to say? Yeah, when I lived in New Zealand, there's a term that if you have like on your password, if you're like signing like, uh, what is it called? Um, censuses, if you're a white person that was born here or has lived here for a long time, it's called uh, Pakeha. I forget what the actual term translates to, but it's the same principle. I don't think there's as bad of a friction for uh, like people living there as it is with Hawaii, just because there's Hawaii is a lot smaller and there's a lot more tourism, like way more. Hey, this is a uh, gentrified neighborhood out here. Do any locals live out here, do we think? Definitely not. I mean, you might have some families that are like second generation and like the property was passed down to them, but. And look at that view. It's gorgeous and breathtaking. Holy smokes. And while it's wow. no surprise, people want that to move so here cool. and have a taste of paradise for themselves. The hitting cost is many native Hawaiians are simply being priced out, forced to move to the mainland, or work two to three jobs to survive. So to curb the displacement of Hawaiians, in 1921, Congress passed the Hawaiian Homes Commissions Act, setting aside roughly two hundred thousand acres of land to homestead the native Hawaiians, allowing okay. Hawaiians with 50% or more Hawaiian blood to be eligible to receive some of this land. But some Hawaiians say this is a Western concept that has no basis in any of their traditions or how they determine who is Hawaiian. Like the whole blood co quantum concept is... A that is cringe though. Yeah, that is cringe. In my opinion, it, I don't think that... I don't think you should have to like pass like... Fi what if you're like 49% or <laughs> you're 40% or something that's so stupid yeah you have to like take an ancestry ancestry um like test what if you fall in love with like a howley that's sad no I, I I'm sure there's like Romeo and Juliet stories like that huh Western concepts. Got it. Being Hawaiian is not only like a race classification. It, it's like it's kind of hard to explain, but it's like a holistic way of living where yeah. the people are connected to the land, and so it's in a way it's like they're kind of stewards of the land. But my uncle who lives in Maui, he's he's a des descendant of royal Hawaiian royalty, and he, like he's got stories about how his auntie would teach him like if you see the the waves that are crashing at this angle and hitting the cliffs this way, that means you're going to be able to find mangoes in this part of the forest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like a shaman. That's cool. It's like being able to read nature and being one in nature. I don't know. Maybe because I grew up like learning about islander culture. Like in New Zealand, there's like mandatory uh, lessons you have to take in social studies where it's like you have to have a designated certain amount of teachings of lessons we learned a little bit of mori and we also learned about like culture and um like the totems and everything what they mean and stuff and like some words they make you like learn how to count i think it's important to like learn a little bit of like the native culture in my opinion
Sure. So we pulled up on David's homie Jamin, who is a local like yeah. David, but has Hawaiian blood unlike David. What does he think of the Americanification of Hawaii since its occupation? 1893, United States annexes Hawaii. What, what are your thoughts on that? What are your What is your family's perspective on? Is this currently occupied land? Did, Actually, did, uh, 1893 was the overthrow. Okay. Uh, the annexation was uh, in 98. Okay. So it was its own re republic for about like five years before they officially got the U.S. to annex it every every island though has had their king and i think big island mokuokiave was specifically allied with great britain okay and i think every kingdom had their own nation that they were pulling from so like russia was involved in this france was involved in what i had no idea what the fuck? Yes, and I think America had another another interest in another that's island, insane. but um, that's why King Kamehameha actually wanted to be a part of Great Britain for that like uh, royal protection. If everyone wants Hawaii, right? Perfect location. I thought it was just America. Huh. In the middle of the Pacific Ocean, especially for the US. Yeah, I mean, that's why they wanted Pearl Harbor, you know? I mean, I guess without it, like you can't really dominate or operate in the Pacific. And that's also a yeah. big reason why Japan came after us. At some point, once they bring guns, tasers, you know, weapons, what do you think that means? You know, like for us, if we retaliate, we're looked at as like terrorists, you know? Sure. Like it's a game of force, bro, for real. Like Does some of the Hawaiians feel like we're, Obviously, you're still occupied, I don't right? Think most people feel that no. way. I just think that's a subliminal reality. At the end of the day, if you did want to practice certain things about your culture and do things in a certain way, you would have to step on some federal laws. You would have to deal with some consequences by the police or whoever, you know, whatever jurisdiction is holding over that part of the land. For most Hawaiians, you're, you're not going to find 100% Hawaiian. You know, most Hawaiians you find is either going to be Chinese, Japanese. Oh, yeah. It's the same with Maori as well. I remember. A lot of them were, because of how long the colonialism happened for, even if you're like considered like a native or you have native blood, it's so diluted that it's not like realistic to say like, oh, well, you can get a scholarship if you have like 20 percent blood of a, a Hawaiian blood or like whatever blood that matters to them. Yeah. Japanese, Filipino, Hawaii, or whatever, you know? So, like, we're all mixed, and to be really Hawaiian is, like, to be able to, like, track where you're from, you know, and to know your lineage and your ancestry. And once you bury enough of your ancestors' bones here, like, you're kind of attached, you know? Sure. And Aww. that's where the life force is, you know? That's where the mana is. Beyond housing, the what mana. makes it expensive to live out here as a, as a Hawaiian? Gas groceries what are the oh words my god like? yeah because they have to they have to import everything because it's an island we got like nine dollars <laughs> milk gallons or what yeah oh my gosh. everybody shops at costco bro you can't afford to not like. if you take away the hotels you decrease all the infrastructure for tourism what jobs are the, the locals working out here or do they just tend to the land and we go back to like a communal simple agrarian setup where people you know have gardens and they give to each other and barter where do the jobs go if you take away all the tourism we we can't really create new industries Industries, okay. being a part of America with American law like we would have to create new laws to do different things differently pretty much like so much it's so complicated I think that this guy is really well educated on this like he's really thinking about it like on a like on a bigger scale like you can't you still are part of America you'd have to change laws you would have to change infrastructure like fuck man yeah, he knows what have to change to make the industries um, appear or or be strengthened. You know, like okay. like you can't really most do of that our money, money is not huh? tourism, bro. It, that's like a facade, bro. Like we could survive without it. It's not like an anti-America stance. It's just a pro-Hawaii stance. Since European contact, beginning with the arrival of Captain Cook in 1778, and through the spread of deadly diseases like smallpox, measles, and whooping cough, the native Hawaiian mm -hmm. population was reduced by roughly 90% over the next 70 years. As the native Hawaiian population was decimated and not interested in working sugar plantations, groups of immigrants from China, Japan, Philippines, yeah. and later Puerto Rico, and Portugal immigrated to Hawaii to work the land for three to five year contracts in a form of indentured servitude. One may call it just a better branded name for what you may know as slavery. Yeah. Fast forward years later, in 1921, as Hawaii is rapidly becoming a melting pot of many cultures, the homestead program sets aside pieces of land to appease Hawaiians' ancestral claims to the land, like the one Jamin's family lives in right now. We're in the burbs, but the homestead burbs. And from my understanding, they're allowed to live here 
for cheap. That's the big plus here. You're getting rewarded for having ancestral ties to this land and being a certain percentage blood quantum Hawaiian. How long did it take for blood your family quantum. to get a homestead? Um, you know, I'm not exactly sure how long it took us, but you know, everyone in my dad's family got on the list at some point. You're kind of like, you know, a little lucky to get like something offered, you know? This is a big crib, right? I expected like a, I don't know, maybe like an apartment or like oh, a, no. this is a nice family house. This is a, this is a five bedroom, okay. three bathroom. Five I'm assuming that goes for if this is not on the homestead. A mill? Probably more, bro. That's a coconut Actually, tree yeah. chat. And then the land, you get like a 99 year lease or something like that. And you 99 year lease? <laughs> You pay like a hundred. Still, still sucks though, man. Everything is overinflated as f. Dollars off the bat for the ninety-nine years of living. So yeah. Every single family here has some blood tie or blood claim to like being Hawaiian and. For sure. Yeah, yeah you can't get it otherwise. So and that's why it was one of the coolest spots to like grow up in, cause like everybody who's lives here is Hawaiian style, you know. Like like we have whole block parties, bro, raging to like late in the night. No cops are called, you know. But Jamin's sister Tate had a few <laughs> other fun. thoughts worth considering. So I'm here with? Uh, Tate Kelly Ho'omalu. Did you grow up here? We grew up in Kahuku, which is on the North Shore, um, on Oahu. Do, do you think you'll ever move out of Hawaii and go to the man? No? I was quick. Tell me why. Uh, Because it's our home. Yeah. Yeah. Our culture and identity is here. So there's no, yeah, we're not, at least for Native Hawaiians, we don't, this is our home. So we don't like to flock away from it. And also too, I, I, I really don't believe in purchasing land or having land ownership outside of like my genealogical ties. Okay. In your opinion, what does it mean to be a Hawaiian? Well, there is no opinion, to be honest. Okay. If you're Native, if you have blood, then you're Hawaiian. If you any, don't. Any amount of blood? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter. So no asking. percentages. Um, I feel like. Okay. At least, at least she, she just thinks that's the. That the percentage thing is stupid. I think it's stupid. Yeah, if if you say you have any Hawaiian blood, okay, that's fair. Our generation though is like better at like breaking those things. If you're Hawaiian, you're Hawaiian. Okay. Yeah, there's no blood quantum. We don't we don't believe in that thing. So even let's say I'm like blonde hair, blue eyed, white, like true, I guess haole. Could I be Hawaiian? If you have Hawaiian blood, you can. Okay. Yeah. I can be a local, but not a Hawaiian, right? Yeah, correct. It's similar to like, I mean, I don't know demographic wise, yeah. but it's like if you're from the if you live in the hood, would you call yourself black? No, I get what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> do you think Hawaii would be better off if it was no longer part of the United States? Would that be a good thing for Hawaii or ultimately a bad thing? Well, I don't see it as a part of the United States. Okay. Um, but do I think they are very far away? Like I I I understand the perspective, man. I understand what she's saying. Hawaii is so freaking far away. It should be unoccupied, absolutely, 100%. When we're talking, yeah. the military bases should... Absolutely. Gone. What does the United States of America mean to you? When, when you think of the USA as a country, a as Hawaii's role in it, is it just like a subjugator? I think the United States is stupid. But my main concern is that they illegally occupy Hawaii, so I don't think that they should have at least jurisdiction here in Hawaii with governance. Okay, as a Hawaiian, what are your thoughts on the tourists that come here to Hawaii? Don't come. Yeah. She seems like a strong advocate for not keeping out all the all the Americans. That's a no, it's a fair viewpoint, guys. You don't understand. She's probably had so much experience in watching in watching her like ancestry being, you know, like the island that you were born in, this is where your ancestors live, and then all these like tech bros and stuff like ruin, uh, ruin the area over like hundreds of years. Not even tech bros. I'm just talking about like overinflation and stuff. I think there's like a median that we can come to where everybody can get along. I just don't know what the solution would be. I also think it's kind of cringe that there's like a quantum for the blood thing. I think you should have you should be able to have this like thing with the um the rental agreement for 99 years even if you aren't like 40 percent or below on the on the blood quantum scale yeah she enjoys segregation no she doesn't she literally just said that if you are hawaiian and you mix with someone that's not hawaiian if your kids are a little bit hawaiian have a little bit of hawaiian blood you're Hawaiian. Yeah. Come but leave. If you're coming, then leave. And don't buy land. And don't own land here. Simple as that. 
What are your thoughts on the folks that come here maybe by a second? And then the billionaires that occupy the islands that just occupy it and rent out like main city apartments for money and make it too expensive for normal people to live there. Let's just remove the whole like racial aspect of the Hawaiian problem. If you were living in Florida, which is what happens, by the way, in Miami, tech bros come and buy your uh, apartments that are in the center. It's horrible. I think it sucks. Too bad. What do you mean too fucking bad? I don't think you should be able to do that. If you're a billionaire who doesn't even fucking live there or pay taxes and just, you know, farms money and doesn't pay taxes on the renting. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's what happened in California. Yeah, and they shitted it up. California used to be a great place to live like 50, 60 years ago. I don't know, man. It's such a stupid fucking thing to like say. Third home, a vacation home. Too maybe bad. A full on tower. You're acting like you're one of the billionaires. You're not. <laughs> if you were in this situation, you would be compl thinking completely differently. because I'm a billionaire and then I don't even use half it. Don't, don't do it, don't yeah. do it, yeah. It's not your right to and um, unfortunately- I'll So the issue isn't racial, it's rich people? Are you fucking stupid or something? She didn't say that you can't come here, period. Don't buy land if you're some fucking goon who lives on the mainland who just farms money off of people living there. The, the people occupy the land. No, she did. I don't know what to tell you. You're mis you're mishearing. Sit down, calm. I'm just gonna keep watching. I'm just gonna keep watching and see what she what else she says. I think almost 50% of Hawaiians don't live in Hawaii, which is so unfortunate. And it's only gonna get worse. What, what like, if they respected the culture, respected it as you see it, and respect it, assimilated into your culture rather than trying to impose their own onto... Like, they're your guests, let's say. Guests leave. Okay. Mic drop. But most people come here with the right intentions anyways, but they don't know that what they're doing is actually wrong. Now, if you are saying, then do your part in getting educated and respect culture, you're not gonna become a Hawaiian and like you're not going to become black when you move to Compton. These people, you know, buy a second home. Okay, she's that she's the extreme example. That guy, the first one, the first guy that was talking was a little bit less stringent. Yeah, she's the more like, "Oh, if you're a guest then leave." Yeah, she's a bit strong. But I do agree that you shouldn't be able to like Basically, like, not be Hawaiian if you're, like, a certain percentage of blood. I think that's dumb. They decrease the supply of available long-term housing. Therefore, the available housing goes up in prices, yep. and then yeah. locals can't afford to rent them. Exactly. Yeah, and I think that's unfair. I, 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 my parents had to deal with that, by the way, with uh, New Zealand housing. Australia is going through a similar thing. Canada is, too. I think it's not even uh, it's not a racial thing in those regards. I just think there's racial connotations with here because of the colon colonization of Hawaii. Exactly. And this has in turn led to Hawaiian locals yeah. to create these huge villages in the woods, living off the land and off the grid in Hawaii at whatever the cost. As I was driving past this park, I noticed a massive encampment hidden in the woods. We pulled up with some Costco pizzas and asked if we could check it out. Queenie, where are we at right now? Before we explore the island more, I want to tell you about the sponsor that made this video possible, uh -oh. Delete Me. And Did you know that data brokers are selling your personal info online? Google your name right now and see what pops up. Anything you wish wasn't there? I do. And this digital age with all your info publicly available, the risk of being harassed, oh stopped, God. or having your identity my stolen info. is always out there. People Have you ever shared a political view or opinion is. that might piss someone off and you don't want people to know where you live? Yeah. I have. Luckily, the sponsor of this video, Delete Me, can help you keep delete your personal face. info private. I've been trusting Delete Me since Bart. <laughs> my personal info private and it's reviewed over a thousand listings, deleted over a hundred and saved me 20 hours of searching and deleting my info that shouldn't even be public. Protect yourself, protect your family and take back control of your personal info and join delete me now for 20 percent off when you go to join deletemecom slash tyler and use promo code tyler at checkout all right let's investigate the islands uh pool no why okay. at the small why boat harbor okay i came down here like a year ago it wasn't as big as it is now i don't think right has it grown last year or so yes yes it did how many people live out here 
We have over over about one seventy. I mean, what choice do they have other than leaving the mainland? I, I this sucks, but at least it's something. Little guy over here, a few kids playing ball. But everyone here, we all call each other family. How long have you guys all known each other out here? I've been here since I was 12 years old, and I'm 26 now. He's been wow. raised here since he came out the hospital. This little guy right here. Okay. His mommy okay. is pregnant with one more. So. Okay. Aww. It looks like everyone's having a good old time out here. It is safe. It's 100% yeah. safe here. Yeah. So I see a little guy. I see those kids playing football. Do they go to school? This is number one rule. Your children reside here, and they're in the age bracket to go to school. They must go to school. Are you giving me the tour? Yeah. Okay. So I see the signs education. Too. It seems like there's some rules. Like we say, your children is number one. Yeah. Keep the safety of your children. There's no stealing allowed in our village. That's grounds to be removed. Let's check it out. I'll shine a little flashlight. Yeah, go ahead. This is my pantry. My pantry consists of everything besides clothing and footwear. Linens, food, kitchenware. Yeah, can I, everything. Can I yeah, come inside. All right. Come inside. Thank you so much. Yeah, we appreciate the hospitality. So where'd you guys get all this stuff? All donations. Oh. After seeing countless tent towns and homeless encampments, I've never seen oh, yeah, anything seen this too. large and organized across the entire country. I'm impressed. This is crazy. You guys built your it's own society out here. Trump. I had no clue this went this far back, by the way. It goes far. Holy smokes. It goes That's far. A big what we're walking now, we're walking down section one. Each it's section offense, has their own dude. captain, their own overseer. Okay. And your role is, um, what exactly? I'm captain for section one. Okay. So let's say some, some crazy guy comes in here and says, or someone just coming here messing around. Then we're going to get together and get him out. Yeah. Yeah. Have you had to do that? Yes. Is it pretty common? Um, yeah. Well, we got some out of state people, and majority of us is Hawaiian. Diva. Hi, Shiba. She's a little shy. Yeah. And we have some inspirational no. quotes here, too. And there's a map. You guys built a freaking map. What's oh in the God. border right here? I'm very impressed. This is, uh, been to quite a few spots. I've never seen anything of this size Girl. and organization. This is like, it's like a nice home encampment, man. Ivian, what, what uh, do you think allows you guys to get along so well and maintain this level of like it's order? Commune, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I grew up believing respect. It comes in everything and anything, whether it be a rock, whether it be a person, yeah. a tree. Also, we just made it to section two, I noticed. Yes, right this is right. section two. Dang. So this has got to be very <laughs> valuable section land, right? Two. Built in library right here. Wow. Okay, that's. I never would have thought all this was hiding behind this parking lot. Give it, give a trampoline. <laughs> Let's see that. We have the basketball court. That's epic. What's your name? Kala. I'm one of the overseers here. Um, she oh, makes sure that everything is going accordingly up there for the construction wise. That makes sure that homes are being built for the people down here. Her job is to bring everybody home. You know, and that's a home out of here or out of home here. here? Out of here to up there into permanent homes. So how many people have you guys transitioned into permanent housing? Right now, we're still in the process of building the sections. What we're going to do is take the kupunas and the children out of here. Okay. First. Kupunas, kupunas are elderly? The elderly, okay. yes. Oh, we have seven the elderly. I am the overseer of three. Try to keep like the single women to the front because it does, uh, it's dark back here. And okay. I try to keep them around families where they can be watched for the safety, you know? Wow, Even though we're all dude. not cut from the same cloth. We See, this is so organized. It's like an actual community, man. Still family. A lot of people come out here and been wow. houseless because of yeah. stipulations along the way that they faced. Whether it was a bump in the road that they hit and they never got back up yet because- Chet, you also have to understand at the start of the video, he said that there's people who work three jobs and they still can't afford a house. So I really fucking hate it when people say, oh, well, they're homeless because they're jobless and they don't do anything. They literally work three jobs and they can't afford the places where they need to live to survive. They can't like have a house over, uh, over, have a roof over their head. It's pathetic. I'm not saying everyone that buys a house that's like, you know, white or whatever, that comes to Hawaii and rents stuff like the, uh, uh, the occupies like the villas and the mansions and the apartments. I don't think everyone is under evil intentions, but there's definitely a lot of people who abuse the system to farm money off of people that literally cannot afford it and it's ruining their life. You just rolled the dice low and you live in Hawaii and you can't afford rent, these little kids? It's not their fault. Because all this time in their life, they're down a lot. Yeah, they so, think this I don't place think will solve fair. their problems. Not really, no. it's just they find it home. Me, I chose to be houseless up here because, because I didn't want to live under nobody's roof. Everybody getting priced out yeah, of that's fair. My, my baby sister had to move, her and her family moved to Las Vegas to survive. Because our pay ain't so great out here. It's like what fourteen dollars minimum wage rent out here. For and you also when when did Hawaii get occupied? When did Hawaii get become a state? 
1959, did it get annexed? Did Hawaii become annexed? 18, 1898. So, all to all the people that say also, oh yeah, like why did they choose to live like this? You have to realize they lived like tribes like 200 years ago. They only became a state like 70 years ago. Think about it. He just wants to live like this because his grandparents live there. You can't really blame him for that. And it's not making it any easier by him not being able to afford housing. Maybe it is like the same for him. Like, Al, you know, I want to live out in like the open air. You do you, man. Our studio is like almost two grand. But people with family working two, three jobs, who is there at home to raise the children? After seeing countless yeah. locals price out of their home in Oahu. I two, three jobs, man. I barely, str I barely, like, I could barely handle editing my own videos, streaming for six hours uh, for fucking six days a week with a part-time job. It's hard, man. I'm not saying it's, like, as hard as this. This is obviously, like, way worse. Oh, uh, I'm just saying it's tough. Flew over to the I island of Maui that. to see what has happened to the locals here nearly one year after wildfires destroyed 2,200 oh, yeah. structures, caused 5.5 billion plus dollars in damage, killed this over 100 awful. people, and displaced over 6,000 people now currently living in hotels, temporary housing, or tents on the beach. What does the future look like for people now on the streets? And are tourists coming back to Maui helping or aggravating the situation of those currently displaced? We have made it to Lahaina. This is your first time here. Yes, sir. When I came here, half this joint was blocked off it was fully burnt down this Damn. is what stands hopefully one year later a lot of this is raised completely who am i here with this is brian with maui okay, gravel and soil i deliver gravel and soil to people all over maui what's changed in the last year or so since the lahaina fires uh well we're rebuilding lahaina businesses like mine that uh, deliver dump trucks of gravel and aggregate uh, for construction purposes are very busy and everybody's just trying their best to do their part to rebuild are tourists welcome in maui right now yes absolutely yeah. you know tourists is where the lion's share of the money comes from. We ask that the tourists show respect for the fire victims, but that time has passed. So the tourists, of course, are welcome here on Maui. It's, it's going to take a decade or longer to fully rebuild the yeah, town. Yeah, that's so We just opened this awesome. store um, in the spring of last year. And it Can I just throw in my two cents? Um, New Zealand suffered massively under COVID when tourism locked down. I think it's really ignorant to say that Hawaii wouldn't suffer the same way. I don't know what the situation was with Hawaii in 2020 and 2019 and 2021, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people complained and it was really bad when the economy went through, like went through what it did because it essentially died. So did Japan too. Like Japan has its own like side uh, economy apart from to uh, from tourism. And it's like, I just don't think it would be really good for them to just cut out tourism completely. I think there has to be like a grounds of like understanding that like tourism is a big thing. It was just kind of really getting going. We were getting ramped up and then the fires happened and we actually didn't know if this area survived for um, a few days. It took yeah. a long time and it's still really not back okay. um, as far as business. I mean, by this time in a summer season, we should be cranking everything's booked lines out the door um which yeah. is obviously not happening <laughs> if they walked in last summer and asked me can i book a boat tomorrow i would laugh at them so right now can i book a, <laughs> book a boat okay brother jay how long you been here in maui 20 yeah it, yeah it's it's really bad it, for, for covid did irreparable damage to tourists uh, tourism places like granted it's like it's a good thing but it's also a really bad thing Seven yeah. years, bro. Okay. Were you here when Lahaina fires happened? Yeah, we was here, bro. We was here. My wife's born and raised up Lahaina Luna. I'm from the other side of the island, yeah? Where are you from before Maui? Atlanta, Georgia. So you have the Hawaiian accent, though? Yeah, I've been out here a long time. You're a full-on brother now. I'm a hybrid. What's going on here <laughs> in Lahaina? <laughs> bro, there's no water. No drinking water? No water in the land. There's no water in the pipes. There's no water for nothing, bro. But I've been here for 16 years. But he's married to a native. <laughs> Okay. my almost my whole adult life as a howley i don't know if that's a pejorative coming Busy. from me are no you water. welcome to come and move here how has your experience been no i water. find moving here to be a, a touchy subject yes yeah. you can't hide that you're obviously not hawaiian no i'm i'm embarrassingly white sure uh, in general yeah. with that question i find that 
um, if if one comes out here with a heart of respect and knowing that this land has a lot of history, a lot of mistrust, a lot of a lot of tragedy, you know, you don't come out here approaching it like Disneyland. Sure. You come out here approaching it with respect and wanting to learn. And I think that it should go for everyone, even people that don't have like tourism. I know this is like mind blowing. <laughs> I think that everyone should have have that kind of respect, not just. <laughs> Not just people who have tourism and have tourists that are disrespectful. Yeah, don't be an asshole. Treat it like it's your home, man. I I cannot believe there's stories of people who just like shit up like tourism areas, man. Wanting to value the, the land and the culture, then then you don't have a problem. Can you explain your tattoo on your face? That thing looks pretty cool. So this is our family. When I was brought over and brought into the Hawaii Kingdom, it was through a family on Molokai. We started living the Kaheas and living the life and learning and educating. And so really, this is just our family genealogy. It's the waterman of Molokai. What are your thoughts on brothers not from here or maybe just like... Dude, he's completely immersed in the culture, though. Would you say he's not Hawaiian? At least, like, culturally, he is absolutely Hawaii. Uh, Hawaiian or from Hawaii. Uh. From California getting a tattoo of like a turtle in Hawaiian fashion. I don't give a f they do. <laughs> okay. I don't give a f you know what I mean? Each is yeah. on journey, bro. Each is on journey. How important is tourism to the economy, holistically? Yeah. Exceedingly important. Okay. It, it's. I say it to people all the time. Thank you for coming. Thank you for visiting us. We all want to live and eat here. Um, you know, and to live and eat here, many of us rely on tourism as an industry, for better or for worse. Okay. Did you feel okay coming here to Maui one year later after the fire, or was there some weirdness or some hesitation? We never thought of anything. Okay. We didn't hesitate. We just decided to come. How's your experience been? It's been awesome. Beautiful out here, yeah? Yeah, oh, very. But it's very. expensive. Are well, <laughs> I'm Mexican. I have a uh, Hawaiian family that call me their Hanai son. Oh, okay. That, so that's why I have Oh, a, yo. Oh. Can you see it? They call me their adopted son. So I'm on the family portrait. This is what we want to Oh, is there adopted son? Oh, she it's cute. It. Want to see people here feeling welcome to come back, say what's up. All right, so Mexican. right ahead of us, we see the death of what once was Got Lahaina on and back. the new Lahaina, Got whatever that will look like. We have straight ahead of us, Bank of Hawaii fork and salad coming soon, Lahaina Cannery. It looks like they're going to turn this place into something completely not like what it once was. There's going to be an entirely new Lahaina. While Maui was years away from rebuilding what once was, I met up with David's uncle, Walter, a Hawaiian OG descended from royal blood to hear Whoa. his thoughts on the rapid change of Hawaii in his lifetime, the effects of tourism on the island, Arnold and the seemingly Geezer, inevitable fading of the Hawaiian culture. He also just happens to Bam be on the FBI watch list for exposing some dark truths in the documentaries he made about the islands in his free time. Our view of Maui is not the same anymore, you know, it's not the same anymore. I remember when Maui- He reminds me of a Torrin shaman from World of Warcraft. Mother Nature guide us. Very calm, Never very had calm any voice. Traffic lights. I remember when the, the first traffic lights in Kaului, there was one light up in Wailuku town. And then all of a sudden, traffic lights came from all over. When it was just stop signs, people used to stop at the sign and wave to their friend across the, at the oh. other stop sign and tell them, hey, you know what? Um, my daughter's got a birthday party Friday. You guys want to come? Yeah. Oh. And the other guy on the other stop sign would say, oh, I can come too. Yeah, you can come too. <laughs> and that's how Maui was. It's a community, man. America's lost its freaking community, bro. And I'm not talking about like just Hawaii. It's like it, it's it's quite literally everywhere. You can't just invite randoms that live in your town to like a freaking party, man. You can't do that. You know, you know, everybody was friends. Everybody had aloha. Now that get the aloha. traffic lights, get three cars running through the red light. I may have done that on accident today. <gasps> on accident. On you accident. Piece of what shit. is this world coming to? <laughs> no, we're not mad at the people that came. It's just the change that decided. Because I believe the Hawaiians left. We're gonna come back and we're gonna kidnap you if you're down. Okay. <laughs> what? Kidnap? Leave that old man alone, man. Unk, we just had an hour plus drive to get here. Where are we at? Tell me about this place. This place is. Oh my god, that is stunning, dog. Sorry, not the man. The old man's really nice. I'm talking about the view behind him. Holy shit! It's called Kahiki Nui. Kahiki Nui. 
Wow. wow. When did you end up with this land? Uh, back in the 1990-something. But this land consists of 20,000 acres. Okay. And this is Hawaiian homeland. Right? How much do you think this would sell for on oh. the market? Priceless. Priceless? Right. <laughs> billion dollar view, in my opinion. Right. Billion with a B. <laughs> and speaking of billionaires, Oprah lives out here somewhere, right? Hate that bitch. Go back to mainland, bitch. Yeah, in Ulupalakua. I imagine she paid a lot more than you did to live here, right? Pretty much. Yeah. So, so I'm honored and I'm privileged to yeah. be here. And you also have a crazy story on your dad's side too, right? Yeah, he had some land up in um, Wahe. And the plantation owner, Sugar Plantation, needed the land. They tried to convince him that he should move out so many times, and he wouldn't do it. Finally, mm. they accused him of having leprosy. Leprosy. What? And they shipped him to the island of Molokai. And I know that he wasn't the only one. And he didn't even have leprosy? That's when horrible. he died, the autopsy so showed no signs of leprosy. So that was a tactic, uh, what Americans were using to steal land yeah, from? Yeah, to get the land. Okay. He died in a leprosy colony with no leprosy. Taken from his family, his friends. Yeah. Dad. Okay. It's not yeah, easy to come colony, out here yeah. and build it. Did you yeah. build this house right here? Yeah. Bare hands? Yeah. Dang. <laughs> Can we see the guns? <laughs> guns? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say the average Hawaiian. Are they going to end up on the mainland just getting driven out or are they going to end up on the streets out here? There's only so much 50, land. 50 you know, the Department of Hawaiian Homes, they should um, address the problem. Why people are leaving? Why are people leaving? And yep. they got so much land. There's Those so damn much tech land, girls. Like 20,000 acres over here. And only 20 of us got homes. Why don't they live more? When did you start noticing millionaires and billionaires? You need to go back out in the, in the wild, man. Become one with nature, chat. Billionaires coming in here and buying second homes, vacation homes, turning them into Airbnbs, and now forcing property taxes to go up that they can't afford. Well, I pay. noticed it back in the late 60s and the early 70s. Okay. You know, the, mm. the winter birds are yeah. coming in. <laughs> if we didn't welcome foreigners, yeah. I wouldn't have my wife. I see. There she is. Oh. 50 years of happy marriage, right? In 51 years. Wow, he this with his bear. yo. 51 years. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, hands for context. We're at the bed, double bunk bed. Yeah, for the kids. It's beautiful. It's, it's kind of uh, Dude. It's, it's so quiet out here. It, it gets... I want to go run down there. I want to run all the way down there and then get eaten by sharks. That's me. I've been to such a quiet, no noise pollution, no light pollution. I want to run down there. No pollution at all. You told me Oprah lives around here. Do you think there's that sort of aloha I give to you and you give back to me mentality when it comes to like the ultra rich and some of these people buying no. building resorts? Honestly, they got money to throw away. Yeah. And so they keep buying and buying and buying. And that's their, that's their privilege. To, so you can't stop them from doing it. You can help so many people. Bro. I mean, I don't have Oprah money or anything like that, but I think the perspectives alone have value. If my father can do, and I can do whatever he can do, I can do. You know, so yeah. your job is to let people know that they can do. I listen <laughs> to the whispering. voice I love this. of my ancestors. They cry out to Yo, me. Yo, must take the rain. They Return out. to the land of Kahiki Nui. leo or na kupuna. When I came first came to the land out here. Kalana, what's he saying? I don't know. <laughs> No, I'm not a lion. I came out here and I was camping on the grass. And in the middle of the night, an owl came in, perched <gasps> himself right on my shoulders. The thing that came to my mind was, if this is the, the owl's home and I'm in his home, then he's welcome me, me home. Oh. And that's, that night I also wrote that song. Major shout out to Uncle Walter, David, and Jamin. Go subscribe to David and Jamin to learn more about the culture of Hawaii as cursing they start their the YouTube investors. channel. And check out Walter's documentaries below. Thanks Oprah for watching. under his breath. <laughs> no, there are definitely some strong takes.
takes a little bit of um, um a little bit of inherent I'll racism, use. but uh, I understand uh, why this is a thought process. I can understand it. I can uh, respect it. You're allowed to have a different opinion from me, but overall, yeah, I think that Hawaii is de definitely getting squeezed by the nuts in terms of like money, 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 money. Like they want to make money. Great video. Loved Unk. Unk was cool. Yeah. A little bit of xenophobia. I mean, honestly, everywhere has xenophobia. I'm sorry. Yeah, stupid portal, man! <laughs> uh, God damn.